Hello everyone, FunshinX here. Welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. We're having a lot of fun. Today we're going to talk about pistons. There are no pistons in the game. There's no nothing that really gives a lateral oscillating, a linear oscillating movement of any kind. Um, but yeah, I can still make a piston. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit bigger than a Minecraft piston or any other kind of piston you may have seen. Um, but this is it in motion. You can see we can go up on top here and build a little staircase for us to get up there. And just a nice pushing rod that has a little platform on top. You can ride it. Whee! <laughs> Who needs a, uh, a lift? We can just make pistons. Um, we can turn it up a little bit here. Let's see if it, it does okay at faster speeds. If you do it too fast, it uh it breaks. <laughs> There's a little bit faster there. Right now I'm in a in a glitch where this um you can see this connector is trying to do it at one hating and not repeating, but it's it's been repeating for about two minutes. <laughs> There's some kind of bug in there where sometimes rotors just spin forever on their own. So that's it there. I've got another one here that's a lateral piston. And you can see this one is being actually has a use. I'll go ahead and turn it on first. You can see it work. And you can see this one just extends out and pushes. And on the side, we've got a kind of a an angle here. So if I get some cucumbers, let's turn them maybe like that. Let them fall. Yeah, I gotta turn on the conveyor belt. Conveyor belt's really easy to build. It's just a bunch of rotors on with blocks. It pushes it down, and that thing goes. Nope, you're not going to the end. Oh no, it didn't push far enough. And there it goes. <laughs> I'm envisioning here. Oh, that thing's really loud. I gotta turn it off. I'm envisioning this machine being hooked up to the end of a catapult. So like you have some kind of hopper that like has a bunch of uh, cucumber boxes or some other kind of boxes and it la lands them there. They come through the conveyor belt and this thing like pushes them into a, a catapult and the catapult like hurls them somewhere over there. <laughs> a catapult will be for another day. I want to teach everyone how to how to build pistons. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and first rip off this facade so you guys can see this one. And what you'll see here is we've got a number of broken blocks these are the ones from when it exploded <laughs> um this this piston i can say is if you save a world and load a world it doesn't always come back the way you saved it sometimes it's like glitched through the walls of this thing um but yeah not bad um so we have some kind of of, of anchor we'll call it an anchor with a rotor here a bearing and that turns your main arm and then you have this other one which is um connected to your push arm um, I'm not sure what this arm is called. Is it the cantilever or something like that? Oh, I don't remember. I used to know. Um, but anyway, so you have uh, two, one um, on your main arm here. The the rotor or the bearing is actually powered. It's rotating. Um, that would normally come from like an engine or you know a water wheel or something that would be rotating this right this main shaft. And then as that um, rotates, you've got this other one that then is translated into some linear action. Um, so both of these, this one right here, that rotation point, and this rotation point are free. They're, no, they're not being powered or anything. They're just kind of rotating. Um, there, there's another system this could be used where if you enclose this piston in a chamber and do some kind of explosion, like in a combustion engine, it would translate the linear motion into rotary motion, like for a steam engine. Pretty cool. All right, so that's how this thing works. This is really loud, so I'm just going to um, break it. This oh, that thing is just broken. Um, once you break these things, they're very difficult to put back together, so you got to be careful. <laughs> you can see in this one, I've actually got the exact same setup. Oops. We can go ahead and peel this off and look. Um, turn it on. See, this one is a little bit smaller, fits in a smaller box, and there it goes. So, let's learn how to build it. We'll give a quick tutorial. So, let's give us uh, a nice little area to work here, and I'll tell you about the, the math as well. So, first, you need some kind of, of axle to, to hold the main rotation. So, I'm just going to build that right there, right? 
Now you need to determine how much um, motion, how much action do I want my piston to have. This one here, if we look at it, let me turn it on one more time just so we can see. If you look from the, um, let's just look at this point. The max point it goes back is about here. And then it goes to about here. So that is, this doesn't really count, four blocks of, of action or motion. Okay, so that's what kind of like what you need to decide first is how far do I want my piston to push? And that determines everything else. Okay, I'll turn this guy out. Oh, is it broken now? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so this one had four, four blocks of motion here. And you'll notice this first arm is three long. What that is, is you take the amount you want to go. Let's say that we want this piston to push eight blocks. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What we do is we divide it by two. So we get four and we add one. So we get five. So we need this main block. Well, I'll add a look out there to be five long. And I'm going to make it out of a different material just so it's easy to see. So that's five. And that, when you do this in a full circle, it's a, it's a radius, basically, four and a half, it will make a, uh, a an action of eight, uh, a distance of eight. So that guy will rotate there. Now we need another um, bearing right here. And this one needs to be as long as this one. What is it? Times two? Hold on. This one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think... Because it has to be longer than the radius of this plus one. So this would be four, so nine plus one is ten. So we need ten blocks here. Let's go back to wood. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So that's how long that has to be. And then you can hook up your other arm. And let's just put it under to make it a little more compact. And this arm can be as long as you want. Okay. Now we need some, um, a, what are these called, a guidance track or some kind of track to make sure this thing doesn't rotate all over the place. So to do that, um, just anywhere past this first line, because you don't want to bonk into that arm, um, we can just build something like this. Make sure you're attaching it actually to the wall and not to the piston arm itself. Okay. I think that will work. And that's pretty much it. So all you need now is some kind of button and a controller. Uh, wire the controller only to that first one there and then to the button. Come into the controller and configure it. Uh, put it at 180. And don't go fast. Start it. Always start out in slow just in case. And then hit the button. You can see it's going to pull it back as it rotates around. And that pulled it back. We toggle the button again. It should push it back there. So that's a toggle st toggleable state piston. We can pull it back or push it out based on the state of our button. Or we can come in here and just put it on repeat mode. And we can probably go a little bit faster. And hit the button on. And now it'll just rotate around forever. Pretty cool. <laughs> if you want, you know, you can probably crank this one up to fast. Whoa! <laughs> but this does push in the game, so it will push me if uh, I'm standing in front of it. You can see there is a little bit of give. It doesn't, it's not exact linear motion. There is kind of some bend. And what I believe that, how that happens is when they made this game, their um, collision boxes are not quite as big as the actual um, geometry of the box itself. So I can place this here, even though you can see every once in a while it does collide with the uh, with the piston arm. If you want to make that straighter, just make this thing have a little bit more uh, boundary to it. That should keep the, l the linear action a lot straighter. Not perfect, but that's as good as you get <laughs> with this game. So let's... Uh, Let's put something on it like that. 
Maybe a little bigger. It's hard to build while it's moving. I should probably stop it. Uh, oh, nope, my build will be a line over there. Turn off his thing. No, turn off. Yeah, this thing's in a, a broken mode too. There we go. Okay, sometimes it just takes a while to stop. So just put, let's build this up. Oops, I built that to the ground. Don't do that. There we go. And then you can go ahead and do things like uh, put some boxes here. Make sure they're freestanding here. And I'll go ahead and push them out and see what happens. <laughs> Clean up the trash. Bam. Nice. But I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this game because you can build a lot of these little contraptions like this that, you know, put them together and you can make a really cool machine. We're, we're just making a cucumber pusher, but that's okay. Could we... What else do we have in here? Is there a large beam? Let's put one of these on the end. Yeah, push them cucumbers. <laughs> cool. Well, that's all I wanted to show you guys today. Hopefully uh, this gets you um, started and you can make some cool contraptions of your own. Don't forget the game is going live today, so go check it out on Steam. Purchase it. I'm not quite sure the price yet, um, but it's it's got a lot of stuff. If you like tinkering and building cool little machines that really do nothing but just look cool, then this is a game for you. A lot of fun. And uh, yeah, hope you guys liked the episode. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to see more, and I'll see you next time. Catch you later. Bye.